Hi, this is a video lesson on how I draw hair. I'm Mike Toyer. I'm a professional portrait artist. I'm also an art teacher at the nearby Penn State University. As a portrait artist, a lot of people have asked me, how do I draw hair? Well, here you go. I'll be drawing this cute little girl. Um, this is not the original drawing. This is just a reproduction of a drawing I did. The original commission I already mailed away to the woman who ordered it. Anyway, I'll be outlining this part of her hair I'll be focusing on. Let's get started. Oh, I should tell you, by the way, there are written rules that go with this video demonstration you're about to see. The video and the written rules are available on my website, MikeToyer.com. Let me um, outline her hair. Oh, I should mention, by the way, I'm using a new pencil called the Palomino Blackwing. Very smooth. Has a great smell of cedar from the wood on the tip. It's great. Oh, and I, I really only use a kneaded eraser and the pencil. Anyway, so I've outlined the hair that I'm going to be drawing. The first rule I always follow, number one, go with the flow. That means <clears throat> I always draw in the direction that the hair grows. This way, this way, down, down, down to the tip. Never draw across that. Always start um, number two where the hair is darkest. I'll be starting at the crown of her head, right at her part, and near her um, bow if you look very carefully. Those two spots are very dark. So along this flow of hair, the natural growth of the hair, those are two dark spots I will, where I'll start drawing. The third rule is I always put my um, pencil down in that dark spot and I press hard and I come up light. Let me start from this side of the bow. Bring it up. You see how the pencil line gets um, just a whisper toward the highlight here. And if you haven't already, you should read my lesson on shading because this highlight that I'm talking about has to do with um, the light hitting this hair here and bouncing off to your eye first, making this part of the hair around the crest of the head. And also the high spots on the curls, you'll notice later, the lightest parts of the hair. That's what gives hair its sheen. So I'm starting at the dark point, drawing toward the light spot, gradually releasing pressure on the pencil. Now normally I don't out outline my drawings as I've done for this demonstration. I just launch into the drawing. Now as it comes up from the um, part here, the hair goes vertical a little bit. It comes up and then comes over. So I'm making my pencil lines come up, you notice. I'm going to turn my board to make it easier to get those vertical short strokes. Then I'm going to curve it around this way. So you notice I'm stopping at the sheen, the high point, the bright spot on the hair. Usually you'll find those bright spots are at the crown of the head you know, where the hair lays on the top of the head. Those bright spots on hair are usually where the curls are highest. Those are just the spots that reflect the most light. Now here around the forehead some stray hair comes down.
you notice there's a little hair on her forehead that um, shoots up that's out of the way. I'm not drawing that right now, you notice. I'll show you in a second how I do that. There's also this little tuft of hair that comes up into her bow. Okay, I think that's enough for the sake of this demonstration. I'll show you, I mean on her forehead anyway, I take the kneaded eraser and I get a little ridge. See that ridge from the side view? And I'm going to actually get it to the thickness of the hair strand and I'm going to bend it. It's going to bend like the hair is bending. And I'm going to place that on the paper where the hair goes. See what I've done? I want a little darker. I've got to reshape the eraser to get a clean spot. Lighter, I mean, if I want to remove more pencil. See what I've done? There's also a little uh, strand of hair that's highlighted here. Then I'll come back and maybe darken that up a little bit. I'll put a shadow under a strand of hair there. A little darker there. So let me move down to one of these curls. I'm going to move down here because curls are very challenging. What I've drawn here in the forward head, not so. It's just a nice, she's beautiful hair going from her part to her bow that's holding her hair tight. So the hair is pretty straight. It's got a gentle curve. Curls, however, a lot harder. I am going to identify those dark spots, which are the low spots in the curls. I see some here. I see one up here where the curl begins as it comes from the bow. Coming down, here's a high spot on that curl. Here's a low spot. So I'm looking for the low, which are dark spots. And that's where I start. Remember, that's the second rule, draw dark to light. So here's the dark spot. I'm going to be pressing hard. That's the third rule, hard to soft, hard to soft, come up that curl. Now this curl has some separations in it. So I'm varying the pressure as needed. And I'm going with the flow. Remember the curl curves like this. I can't draw a straight line right across there. I got to go I have to go with the flow. You notice how many times I repeat this. Now I'm coming up in this direction, you notice. You notice how many times I repeat these, repeat these pencil strokes. I'm basically doing that for as many strands of hair there are in the head, or tufts, curls. As soon as you go out of the flow, you run into trouble. It's like um, driving your car in the wrong direction. or petting a cat the wrong way. If you've ever done that, you get hurt. So you always want to go with the flow. Now I'm going to continue the flow this way. This, this last curl, you notice, is very bright, isn't it? The high spot is pretty bright. You always have to be mindful of those. And I'll tell you what, drawing isn't always exactly copying what you see. Your drawing can be ten times better if you can actually manipulate the rules of light. So don't just practice viewing and looking and copying everything as you see it. Of course you should do that, but in addition you should also understand how light works, how things are shaded. Once you understand that you can bend those rules and you make your drawing more interesting. You can add shadows and light where they don't often exist. Can make your drawing glow in a way that the photograph alone does not. Anyway, you see how I started from the low spots, the dark spots, and pressed hard with the pencil, rule number three, and got lighter as I came up along the flow of the hair. And I did it on the other side of this curl.
pretty simple. Pretty soon you'll be able to practice this. Repeat, rinse, wash as necessary and you will have a beautiful head of hair. And honestly, this does not take that long. The drawing that you're looking at did not take me all that long. One other rule, the, my final rule actually, number four in this lesson, you may have already noticed on your own. I started with the board this way and you saw me move it. Why? Fourth rule is I keep my arm still always. My forearm is planted on the, on the desk. My, sometimes my hand is, my palm is planted and I just move my fingers. If I need a big range of motion, I'll move my hand, but my forearm stays in one spot. So that limits my range of motion about a 45 degree angle. If I want to draw the, the gentle arc of the hair on her forehead, for example, I can't really draw in this position without moving my arm. Instead of moving my arm, what do I do? Move the board. That's the way to do it. So I move the drawing to accommodate the most comfortable position for my hand. Don't move your hand. Keep your arm still, I mean. Don't move your arm. That's bad. Good. Hey, I hope this lesson was helpful. Go draw hair. See you, everybody.